there is a gap in patient care. In this gap, patient attendants are blowing out knees, injuring backs, and shredding shoulders. This gap exists between the patient and the wheeled stretcher. In this gap are the tight turns, narrow pathways, and steep stairs that contribute to changing some attendants' lives. The injury rate is alarming. The following proof is from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics show that in 2011, the rate of overexertion injuries averaged across all industries was 38 per 10,000 full-time workers. By comparison, the rate for ambulance workers was over six times the average. The single greatest risk factor for overexertion injuries in healthcare workers is the manual lifting, moving, and repositioning of patients. Further proof comes from beyond the fire ground, injuries in the fire service. Almost 85% of dispatches involve either basic or advanced life support. Injuries due to patient transport account for almost 17% of all injuries. And most telling, over 46% of lost time injuries, more than any other lost time injury, are a result of patient transport. The gap is real, but that gap is now filled. Introducing the HILT, Human Injury Limiting Tool. The HILT is as versatile as your job. Whether you need to carry a supine patient, lift a seated patient, carry a patient up or downstairs, carry an immobilized patient, conduct a single person rescue, or complete a lateral transfer, the HILT is the tool to help get the job done. Why buy the HILT? Simple. The HILT is the only multi-purpose injury prevention patient transport tool available. The HILT was born from necessity. Do your job safely. Go home. Live life. Get a HILT. Human Injury Limiting Tool. The HILT promotes better lifting techniques. Thus, exposure to the stresses of patient handling are minimized. Because the HILT extends reach, the patient attendant's body can be positioned more like a weightlifter. Legs are more parallel with the ground, the back is straighter, the head is more upright, and there is no need to reach all the way to the surface. Injuries to attendants are less likely. Let's begin by discussing the HILT and some of its elements and dimensions. Grasp the HILT near the end and throw the roll out. As an alternative, the HILT can be laid on the ground and rolled out. The HILT's label is a point of reference to how it's positioned. The label is on the top side. From end to end, the HILT is approximately 6 feet long. From side to side, it's approximately 2 feet wide. From the midpoint to one end, and from the midpoint to the opposite end, the elements mirror each other. Regardless of which end an attendant is working from, one will see the same elements. There are two sets of three base handles on the HILT. Base handles are color-coded for easier recognition. Here are the low-lift base handles, medium-lift base handles, and high-lift base handles. A fully deployed extender is approximately five and a half feet from tip to tip. A fully deployed safety strap is approximately six and a half feet from tip to tip. Safety straps help stabilize the patient within the hilt. One should not assume they prevent a patient from falling out if due care is not taken by the attendants. Let's look at the bottom side of the hilt to clearly show the alternating pattern of extenders and safety straps. There are five extenders that are tan in color. Here are the first sets of extenders, the second sets of extenders, and the middle set of extenders. There are four safety straps that are black in color. Here are the first sets of safety straps and the second sets of safety straps. The hilt has a simple configuration of alternating extenders and safety straps. Not all extenders and safety straps are needed for every move. Now, let's turn our attention back to the top side to highlight each of the extender and safety strap tabs. There are five extender tabs along each side. Note the second set of extender tabs are located underneath the high lift base handles. There are also four safety strap tabs along each side. With the patient on the hilt, we will demonstrate how to deploy and use a safety strap and two extenders. The two attendants grasp and pull a safety strap tab from each side at the same time. 
Safety straps have Velcro to fasten the strap. The two attendants grasp and pull two extender tabs from each side at the same time. Note the second set of extender tabs are found and pulled from underneath the high lift base handles. Each extender has two handles, one low lift and one high lift handle. To keep the patient closer to the surface, or if needed for a larger patient, use the low lift extender handles. These handles are closest to the ends of the extenders. To lift the patient higher, use the high lift extender handles. These handles are closest to the patient. To grasp any of the base or extender handles, insert hands into the loops, turn palms toward the handles, and grab. When lifting, allow the weight to rest around the wrist instead of holding the weight in the palm of the hand. These attendants are demonstrating the starting position to safely lift the patient using the high lift handles. It's easy to put the hilt back into service. Each extender and safety strap has its own sleeve for storage. If storing an extender or safety strap near the high lift base handles, it is helpful to move the high lift base handles out of the way. Let's store a safety strap. Fold the safety strap in half to measure how much tab to leave exposed. Insert the folded end into each sleeve. When both sides are in their respective sleeves, pass the loop side of the Velcro strap underneath the hook side. Insert each into the opposite sleeve. If needed, store the high lift base handles back into position. To store an extender, fold at the Velcro tab just below the low lift extender handle. Insert the folded end into each sleeve. If needed, store the high lift base handles back into position. Once all extenders and safety straps are stored, roll the hilt for storage. Lay the hilt with the label up. Fold the low lift base handles over at each end to store them within the roll. Begin the roll from the opposite end of the label and roll toward the labeled end. Place the hilt into its bag. Understanding each element of the hilt is important. This understanding allows attendants the ability to take full advantage of the hilt's versatility and injury prevention qualities. A successful job ends with a patient cared for by healthy, uninjured attendants. Lift and carry a seated patient. One of the most common calls for assistance is to help a patient that has fallen to the floor and just needs some help back into a chair or bed. The old way to help the patient was for patient attendants to grab an arm or leg and try to muscle the patient off the floor. This forced attendants to strain themselves from awkward positions. Deploy the hilt with a label down to position the low, medium, and high lift base handles down. Roll the ends toward the center. Keep the rolls tight to help hold the webbing in place and make finding the medium and high lift base handles easier. If a medium lift is desired, stop rolling once the medium lift base handles are exposed. Pull the handles from the Velcro tabs and position the hilt under the patient. A medium lift may be desired if the patient is large or if it's preferable to keep the patient closer to the walking surface. For demonstration purposes, we will continue rolling to use the high lift base handles. Once the desired sets of base handles are deployed, simply slide the hilt underneath the patient's legs until the edge of the hilt touches the patient's buttocks. One attendant can rock the patient from side to side as two others slide the hilt until its midpoint is underneath the patient's tailbone. With the hilt in position, one attendant can reposition to the front to help balance the patient during the lift. Prepare to lift. On three, one, two, three. The hilt's design allows attendants to use good lifting technique, thereby minimizing the stresses placed on their bodies due to the lift. Be sure to view the elements and infection control videos for additional information. Combine with a backboard. In the past, patient attendants were forced to reach all the way to the floor and underneath a patient to grab a backboard. 
That's no longer necessary since the hilt can be combined with a backboard to extend the attendant's reach. In this video, we will demonstrate how to combine the hilt with a backboard in two different ways. Other combinations are possible and users should evaluate the best combinations for their needs. To position one attendant at the patient's head and one at the feet, deploy the hilt and lay the backboard on top. Thread all four low lift base handles through the backboard's corner handholds. With the hilt and backboard combined, the attendant's reach has been extended to promote better body mechanics during the lift. To position one attendant on each side of the backboard, deploy the hilt and fold each end up to the second set of extenders. If needed, review the elements video to locate the second sets of extenders. Extender tabs are now at all four corners. Place the backboard on top. Deploy all four corner extenders and thread the extenders through the nearest backboard handholds. Consider the patient's weight when positioning the backboard. The patient weighs more toward the chest. Combining the hilt and backboard too close to the patient's feet or head will create an imbalance where the patient may be dropped. Follow local procedures for patient packaging. A full-length hilt may be used if additional attendants are needed for the lift. The more attendants that are used, the less weight each attendant lifts. Simply thread an extender through a backboard handhold for each attendant. Be sure to view the elements and infection control videos for additional information. Lift and carry a supine patient. Learning to lift and carry a supine patient is important since four of the hilt six moves use the same setup steps. The other three moves are carry a patient up or downstairs, single person rescue, and lateral transfer. This video has three parts. Part one will demonstrate how to load the patient onto the hilt in two different ways. Part two will demonstrate how to lift a patient in three different ways. Part 3 will showcase different locations attendants can position around the patient. Part 1. To load a patient onto a full-length hilt, deploy the hilt next to the patient. Log roll the patient and slide the hilt over. Log roll back and center the patient. If desired, deploy safety straps and fasten them around the patient's upper and lower body. To load a patient onto a shortened hilt, Fold one end up to the second set of extenders. Shortening the hilt may be desired if the patient is shorter or if setting up for carrying the patient up or downstairs. Log roll the patient and position the hilt's edge just above the patient's knees. Log roll back and center the patient. Deploy safety straps and fasten them around the patient's upper and lower body. Part two. To lift a patient with a full length hilt with base handles only, position one attendant at the patient's head and one at the feet. One attendant on each side of the patient will grasp both high lift base handles. Prepare to lift. On three. One, two, three. To lift a patient with a full length hilt with two attendants on each side, deploy the first and second sets of extenders at both ends of the hilt. Place hands into the desired extender handles for a low or high lift. Prepare to lift. On three. One, two, three. To lift a patient with a shortened hilt with two attendants on each side, deploy the first and second sets of extenders at the patient's head and chest. Next, deploy the second set of extenders at the patient's knees and the middle set of extenders near the patient's waist. Place hands into the desired extender handles for a low or high lift. Prepare to lift. On three. One, two, three. Part three. Part three will show some variations for attendant positions around the patient. These can be practiced in preparation for various scenarios. It is important to remember that the larger the patient is, more attendants, up to 14, can be added around the hilt.
Other variations are possible, and users should evaluate the best setups for their needs. Be sure to view the Elements and Infection Control videos for additional information. Single Person Rescue Patients find themselves needing help in many different locations and conditions. Sometimes, only a single patient attendant can access the patient or is available to assist. In this demonstration, we will show how to drag a patient with a shortened hilt. However, a full-length hilt can also be used. To load a patient onto a shortened hilt, fold one end up to the second set of extenders. Log roll the patient and position the hilt's edge just above the patient's knees. Log roll back and center the patient. Ensure the patient's head remains below the upper edge of and within the hilt. Deploy safety straps and fasten them around the patient's upper and lower body. Insert hands into the low lift base handles and pull the patient to safety. An attendant can either pull the patient while on their knees or stand up to drag the patient. Some situations that call for a single person rescue are extrication from confined spaces, active shooter scenes, mass casualty events, and facility evacuations. Be sure to view the elements, lift and carry a supine patient, and infection control videos for additional information. Carry up or downstairs. This demonstration will show how to carry a patient up or downstairs with a shortened hilt. However, a full length hilt may also be used. To load a patient onto a shortened hilt, fold one end up to the second set of extenders. Log roll the patient and position the hilt's edge just above the patient's knees. Log roll back and center the patient. Deploy safety straps and fasten them around the patient's upper and lower body. With two patient attendants on each side, deploy the first and second sets of extenders at the patient's head and chest. Next, deploy the second set of extenders at the patient's knees and the middle set of extenders near the patient's waist. Place hands into the desired extender handles for a low or high lift. Prepare to lift. On three. One, two, three. It's very important to ensure the patient is safely seated in the hilt prior to using stairs. If needed, use a full length hilt for additional stability. There is no need to reconfigure the patient's position when stairs are encountered. Simply walk up or down the set of stairs with the patient's head higher than their feet. The hilt can be used to carry a patient up or down stairs with three attendants. Two attendants position near the patient's thighs and use the second and middle sets of extenders. The third attendant at the patient's head will use the low lift base handles the hilt can also be used with two attendants on each side of the patient, with two attendants near the patient's head using the first and second sets of extenders. The two attendants near the patient's thighs use the second and middle sets of extenders. Other variations are possible, and users should evaluate the best setups for their needs. Be sure to view the elements, lift and carry a supine patient, and infection control videos for additional information. Lateral transfer. One of the most strenuous tasks faced by patient attendants is laterally transferring a patient from a bed. A lateral transfer is a common cause of injuries to attendants. We will demonstrate how to transfer a patient out of a bed in three different ways. Other combinations are possible, and users should evaluate the best combinations for their needs. Caution Use due care to not drop the patient from the bed during the transfer. To transfer a patient from a bed to a wheeled stretcher, load the patient onto a full-length hilt. Up to five attendants may be used, depending upon the patient's weight and the attendant's ability to access the patient. Deploy enough extenders for each attendant. Insert hands into the handles and slide the patient from the bed onto the wheeled stretcher. To transfer a patient from the side of the bed and carry in a supine position, Load the patient onto a full-length hilt. On one side, deploy the first and second sets of extenders at the patient's upper body. 
On the opposite side, deploy the first and second sets of extenders at the patient's lower body. Working in unison, pull in opposite directions to pivot the patient in the bed. Deploy extenders on opposite sides from those first deployed. Two attendants near the head insert hands into handles, and in unison, pull the patient from the bed until the patient's waist is near the edge of the bed. Two more attendants insert hands into the remaining handles, and in unison, all attendants fully transfer the patient from the bed. To transfer the patient from the end of the bed and carry in a supine position, load the patient onto a full-length hilt. Two attendants deploy the first and second sets of extenders near the patient's lower body. Insert hands into handles. Then in unison, pull the patient from the bed until the patient's waist is near the edge of the bed. Two more attendants deploy the first and second sets of extenders near the patient's upper body. Insert hands into handles. Then in unison, all attendants fully transfer the patient from the bed. Be sure to view the elements, lift and carry a supine patient, and infection control videos for additional information. Infection control. Infection control is a common concern for patient attendants. However, disposable absorbent sheets can be used to protect the hilt from contaminants. We will demonstrate how to pre-roll 90-inch by 48-inch disposable absorbent sheets and deploy the hilt for supine and seated patients. Lay out one sheet with the absorbent side down. Lay the hilt with the label up on top of the sheet. Fold over the low-lift base handles. Lay a second sheet with the absorbent side up over the hilt. Fold the ends of both sheets over. Then fold the sides. Roll the hilt combined with sheets and store within its bag. Load the patient using the lift and carry a supine patient procedures for a full length hilt. Unfold both sheets to gain access to the hilt. The first sheet will remain on the surface where the patient was lying. The second sheet will remain between the patient and the hilt. If needed, a third sheet may be added on top of the patient for additional protection. Disposable absorbent sheets also protect the hilt when lifting a seated patient. Center the hilt on top of one folded in half sheet. Center a second folded in half sheet on top of the hilt. Fold each end under. Folding the ends under will help hold the sheet in place as the hilt is positioned underneath the patient. Load the patient using the lift and carry a seated patient procedures. Roll the ends of the hilt toward the center to prepare to lift a seated patient. The bottom sheet will protect the hilt from surface contaminants, and the top sheet will protect it from contaminants on the patient. If needed, a third sheet may be added around the patient for additional protection. Review the elements, lift and carry a supine patient, and lift and carry a seated patient videos for more in-depth instruction. It's easy to keep the hilt clean. Cleaning prolongs its service life and maintains a product that is safer for patients and patient attendants. If the hilt comes into contact with dirt and grime, hand cleaning with a mild detergent, cool water, and soft bristle brush is recommended. However, a washing machine can be used. It is best to use a washing machine without a center agitator. A center agitator will degrade the strength of the stitches Set the machine to use cool water with a mild detergent. Air dry the hilt away from direct sunlight. Prolonged exposure to sunlight will deteriorate the fibers. Machine drying with the accompanying temperatures and tumbling will also deteriorate the fibers. If needed, use a disinfectant that is safe for soft materials. The hilt is entirely made of soft materials. Follow the disinfectant manufacturer's recommendations for disinfecting. After disinfecting, Follow the recommendations outlined in this video for cleaning and drying. Cleaning and disinfecting can be minimized or avoided altogether. Disposable absorbent sheets can be used with the hilt to prevent contact with dirt, grime, and contaminants. Watch the infection control video 
and see how easy it is to protect the hilt 